Okay, I should be recording now. So uh, this is a common, this is phenol, of course, and benzene often appears on molecules, but just because benzene's there doesn't mean that you need to do benzene-based reactions, right? So if, if you wanted to add stuff, you know, to a, a position on benzene, if this was your sort of uh, goal, right, something like that, then we would need to, let me, um, let me change that a little bit to make it more applicable. All right, let's say we want like a methyl group here. So that's that uh, called a friedel crafts alkylation, but importantly, the reagents that we're going to use there are something like an alkyl chloride and aluminum trichloride to then add to the double bond. The aluminum trichloride is this really strong Lewis acid that kind of takes away this chlorine and makes this essentially a cation, so extremely electrophilic, and then it can add to the benzene, because right? we need really strong electrophiles to be able to add to benzene. But let's say instead, that wasn't what we were after. Instead, we wanted something like this. So we're adding the CH3 to the oxygen, not to the benzene. That's a very different kind of reaction. The fact that there is benzene here no longer matters, right? This could be anything. This could be ROH, and this could be ROCH3. The fact that it's a benzene ring really doesn't influence this at all, uh, except it makes the OH a little bit more acidic. But um, but you can still do this. This time, this is more like a typical nucleophilic substitution. So um, you know, any kind of thing like that. If you want to deprotonate this first with some kind of strong base, that's okay too. Uh, but we're looking at just typical nucleophilic SN2 type nucleophilic substitution here. So that's that's going to be very different from the benzene reaction. So this this transformation has nothing to do with the chapter nine chemistry really. This is just um, substitution chemistry. So uh, that comes up on the quiz a couple times. So watch when you're doing your transformations if the you want you want it to react with the benzene and actually end up on benzene or do you are you just reacting with something that happens to be attached to benzene um, that then doesn't doesn't affect that so does that make sense computer slowing down again all right um other questions about any of that kind of stuff So again, uh, let me know if you have more questions. Um, you can send me an email. You can ask to meet at particular times, um, and I'll try to answer whenever I can. Yes, go ahead, Irina. Or 6C on the quiz. Okay, what about it? All right, 6C, um, how to add the ring. All right, well, think about it this way. Go backwards. We can, we can probably assume that this part is this part. So think about it backwards. Instead of thinking about how do I add the ring, we're still going to be forming that bond, but maybe you can think about how do I add this to benzene? But 
type of, you know, can we convert this into an electrophile that can be added to benzene? And because, in, because there's no limitations in these types of transformations, you know, you could kind of add this as, an, as a whole part. There's no reason to start with benzene, but you can think about how to make this into something that can then add to benzene. So I'll give you, I'll give you that hint there. Does that help? I don't want to just like answer your question, but hopefully that helps. Okay, let's look at um, the chemistry of amines. This is chapter uh, 10. This is a pretty short chapter. Um, we've already done a lot of this stuff. Uh, we're just going to kind of put it all in one place and maybe learn one or two new reactions. So as we've talked about in the past, amines are nitrogen-based things like this. There are various types of amines. There are um, these that we've seen a lot, kind of typical aliphatic amines like that. We just learned about aromatic amines like aniline. Remember that name. And then there's also heterocyclic amines. So amines where the nitrogen is actually inside of a ring. We saw a couple of also um, You'll notice that something common with amines is they tend to add an ene. And this is important uh, when you think about things like pharmaceuticals and other uh, bioactive molecules. A lot of them end in ene. If you think of some different um, Names of molecules that you've heard of, uh, you know, uh, morphine, codeine, mepiridine. Um, what are some other good ones? Um, benzedrine, all those kinds of things. Uh, those are all amines. So those have amines as an important functional group in their structure. Uh, so if one confusing thing about amines is they're often named by their common names because they show up in all these uh, kind of biological contexts. They've been molecules that we've known about for a long time. So we get a lot of these like weird names that aren't really systematic at all. When you can use systematic names, there's a couple different ways to do it. Gen the, the official rules, like if we look at a simple amine like this, The official rule is to use the suffix amine. So we would call this one 2-butanamine. So just like when we named alcohols, it would be all, but instead we say amine. Um, we can also kind of extend that to substituents. So this one would be S1 phenyl. And amine. So even though we, we tend to think of benzene as this big important group, in this case, the amine really gets the priority there. And so we're, we're really numbering this as a 1, 2 ethanol or ethane type molecule with a phenyl at number one and an amine at number one. So that's a, that's a way that we can name these systematically. And then we can have diamine, triamine, stuff like that too. Now, one thing that can also happen with amines is you can have other types of R groups coming off of the nitrogen. It doesn't have to be NH2. 
And so if you have something like that, you name it by saying n and then whatever that substituent is. So if this is this is aniline, aniline would be NH2. But let's say instead we've got NH with a CH3. So what would we call that? We call this one N. Aniline. So we're saying that the methyl is on the N on the nitrogen. So N for nitrogen. If you have two substituents on a nitrogen, uh, the syntax for that is NN. So we might call this one N. Dimethyl cyclopentanamine. Okay. So we've got the N N dimethyl, so two methyls on the N. Think about how that would be if it were just a regular alkane. It would be like 1 1 or 2 2 or 3 3 if we had two methyl groups coming off of the same carbon. This time they're coming off of the nitrogen, so it's NN dimethyl, and then cyclopentane, it's an amine, so cyclopentanamine. All right, questions about that? Let's try it. Let's try that. See if you can name these two compounds. Got this one. These are means. And this one. So you can come up with names for those. If you feel like it, uh, go ahead and type it in the chat window or say it. If you don't, just see if you can write it down for yourself. Anybody feel like typing one in, or are you still working on it? I can't tell if people are just not typing, or if you just if you just don't want to, or if you're still working on it. Okay, we got an N-methyl isobutylamine.
Any other names for either of those? N-ethyl-2-methylprophenamine. Uh, so, Nicole asks, do you prioritize the NH or the methyl group first when counting? So, we will, um, you would prioritize the amine. So, the amine is the functional group, so that gets the, the priority there. All right, let's take a look at these. So, there are actually a couple ways to name this first one. If we're using the, the systematic rules that we just talked about, we would say the nitrogen functional group, the amine functional group is on carbon one. And our substituents are a methyl group on carbon two and a methyl group on the nitrogen. So that makes this N methyl. Two methyl propenamine. Now, the other way to talk about this and to talk about amines in general, especially when they're simpler, smaller, is to simply name the different things attached to the amines, kind of like ethers. So we can say this is an amine that has a methyl on one side and an isobutyl on the other side. So another way we could name this is isobutyl methylamine. In that case, we don't use the N or the numbers uh, because we're just saying these are the different groups that are stuck onto the nitrogen. This is uh, the bottom one here is more of like a common name, isobutyl methylamine. And this top one is the systematic or the IUPAC name. So following the rules, this is what you get. This is more of a common way of referring to smaller amines. Um, so which is preferred? Uh, I would say it depends on the question. Generally, they're both going to be used. Uh, a systematic name, as, as we've talked about before, systematic names are nice because they are unique and you always know what you're talking about. Um, common names for smaller amines are all also pretty easy to tell usually. Uh, so I don't know that one is really preferred, but if you're asked for an IUPAC name, like a, a systematic name, you have to use the rules like the first one. So this one here, um, we would call this again, either, uh, let, let's look at the systematic name. So in systematic naming with benzene, we still use the, the altered kind of benzene names based on the substituents. So this would be named as an aniline rather than a benzene because benzene with nitrogen attached is aniline. So we would call this one N N ethyl methyl aniline. The reason we don't see we don't say benzene there is because benzene makes it confusing because you've got N and N, but by saying benzene, it doesn't say necessarily where that N is. If we're talking about a nitrogen connected to benzene, we have to call that an aniline. That's what a nitrogen connected to benzene is. So you could also call this by its common name, which in this case, you would look at the three things on nitrogen, ethyl, methyl, phenyl. Ethyl, ethyl methyl, phenyl, amine. So this one, in this case, this would definitely be a less used name. Uh, 
uh, just because, again, we always think of if a nitrogen is attached to benzene, that so changes the properties of that molecule that it's really important that we call that an aniline and not a benzene. Um, so this would almost certainly be named as an aniline rather than a phenylamine. So yeah, we would, this would be phenyl, but in this case, we call it an aniline. All right. Another important, benzene amine is not a thing, correct? Right. Benzene amine is not a thing that is called aniline. Uh, po possibly confusingly, you can have benzyl amine, which is actually a phenyl and then CH2 and then NH2, um, but not, not benzene amine. Okay. Another important class of amines are ammonium ions. So those are nitrogens that have four alkyl groups on them uh, or, or three alkyl groups and a hydrogen. Uh, and are positively charged. So things like And these are generally named instead of amine, you just say ammonium. So this would be Tetramethyl ammonium chloride. So four methyls on the ammonium chloride. Uh, if you look at your cleaning solutions, you'll probably see a lot of these things. Uh, alkyl ammonium chlorides are very good disinfectants. Um, so you'll probably see things like um, They'll have weird substituent names using common names like cetyl pyridinium chloride or cetyl ammonium, uh, things like that. You know, the, those like big words on your Lysol containers, uh, cleaning stuff for disinfectants. But ammonium, uh, quaternary ammoniums are good disinfectants. They kill bacteria and viruses. They're generally effective against uh, COVID-19 as well. So that's a good thing to have around uh, so that you can clean surfaces and and keep things disinfected so we're just going to look at some physical properties next like we did with the phenols these should be no surprise we can probably guess at some of the We can probably guess at some of those physical properties just based on the functional group that you know, or the other functional groups that you know. I know this is kind of behind my head, but I just want to put it in the notes so you have it. Um, so while we're looking at this, here's your ammonia, which is has an extremely, uh, or not extremely, but it has a low boiling point. It's generally a gas. It's very soluble in water, can hydrogen bond, uh, but not as strongly as OH because nitrogen is. And then as you kind of add alkyl groups to the amines, you increase the boiling point because of the uh, dispersion forces, those alkyl chains starting to attract each other. You also start decreasing the solubility in water as you have longer and longer chains. Uh, for the, just like with the alcohols, as we had about five to six carbons on an alcohol, it, it starts to it really starts losing its solubility in water. Same thing with as we add more carbons, so the secondary amines, the tertiary amines. Um, as you add more carbon, again, you lower the solubility a bit and increase the boiling points. There. So that's all kind of expected based on similarity to, to oxygens. 
about that. And then the other important part of uh, uh, physical property, not really physical properties, chemical properties of amines is their acid base properties. So let's again take a look at those from the book here. space. Okay. Well, you can see this in, in the book if you can't see it here, but uh, this is, let's see, where are we at? Page 342. So uh, you can look again at ammonia as kind of a starting place. And this time the PKB and the PKA are both reported. We've only really dealt much with PKBs, um, or sorry, PKAs of conjugate of acids. So PKB is just the inverse PKA plus PKB is 14. So um, the, the higher the PKA of the conjugate acid, the lower the PKB. So it's kind of like base strength. The lower the PKB, the more basic that is. Um, so the reason we're looking at those is because amines act as bases. They have that nice lone pair and they can act as bases. So what you see here is generally adding alkyl groups to amines makes them stronger bases. So if we're lowering the PKBs, we're getting stronger bases. So adding alkyl groups makes them stronger. Adding benzene groups like anilines are much less basic, much weaker bases than alkyl or than uh, non-aromatic, non-anilines, than amines. So why do you think that is? Why are anilines less basic? Why, why are these molecules less basic than these top ones? Any guesses? Yes, structure. What about the structure? What is it that's causing that effect? Why, why are the anilines so much less basic? Yes, the benzene. What about it? What's what's happening there? Let's draw some structures and think about it this way. Remember that the basicity of an, an amine comes from its lone pair. That's the thing that's going to go grab a hydrogen. Actually, let's let's do an even more direct comparison here. So the PKA of aniline, or uh, the PKB of aniline is 9.37. The PKB of cyclohexyl amine is 3.34. And remember, that's a logarithmic scale, so that's a huge, huge difference. So what is it about the benzene that's changing the basicity of that lone pair? relative to cyclohexylamine. Yep, the double bonds. Why? So here's another hint. If you look at the table here, at the bottom of the table, it's kind of cut off, but nitroaniline is much less basic even than aniline. So much less basic. 
than aniline, and then cyclohexylamine, much more basic. What's happening there? Uh, the answer is resonance. So let's let's take a look at that. In aniline, we can draw these resonance forms like we did before. We actually we actually drew these, I think, back in the last chapter. And we can kind of pass that around, around the ring. So what that means is that lone pair is really kind of a part of this pi system. It's in resonance with all the rest of this stuff. If we look at it sideways, we see actually that the our pi system from these p orbitals. All right, this is that whole benzene thing. So these are all shared in this orbital system. And the nitrogen lone pair is actually going to be a part of that system. So um, we wouldn't count that as part of the aromaticity because it's not in the ring but it's still sharing with part of that system. So that nitrogen is actually sp2 hybridized so that the lone pair can be a part of all this delocalization. Um, so base, the reason that makes that a weaker base is that lone pair is kind of tied up in this resonance. Um, if it, pro, if it uh, deprotonates something, if it takes a hydrogen, now it's fully sp3 and can no longer participate in that resonance. Um, so there's there's some barrier there. Whereas if we look instead at, at a cyclohexylamine, now that lone pair is all on its own. There's no resonance there. Uh, if we drew this kind of on a side view, it wouldn't be planar, right? It would be a share confirmation. And this would be fully tetrahedral with the lone pair in an sp3 orbital. So not, not resonance stabilized at all, but rather uh, kind of all on its own. So that makes that lone pair much more basic than this resonance stable. Uh, the reason I gave you the hint of the nitro aniline here, uh, same thing. If we have an electron withdrawing group on benzene, on the other side of benzene, then we're going to be withdrawing those lone pairs all the way over to the nitro group uh, and even, even more resonance. Um, so let's take a look at that. So here's our here's our nitro aniline. We can draw a resonance like this that brings that lone pair all the way back to the oxygen. Can 
your nose there. Like that. All right, so that's a very um, stabilizing resonance form. Um, so generally, electron withdrawing groups that we can pull, where we can pull that that lone pair back, those are going to be making it less basic, so stabilizing the, the lone pair. If we had electron donating groups on the benzene, oh, sorry, yeah. If we had electron donating groups on the benzene, then it would go the other direction and make it make it more potentially more basic. So when we're thinking about basicity of amines, we want to look at resonance and uh, induction, the same kinds of effects we looked at with uh, alcohols and phenols. Okay, let's look at synthesis of amines. So we want to make amines. What does that look like? A um, couple, couple choices there. Cabinet. Liquid dishes. Sorry. Um, looking for stuff. Okay, uh, synthesis of amines. So if we want to make amines, we got a couple choices. Um, one we've already kind of looked at, which is substitution. So we can always make amines by using them because they're decent nucleophiles. So things like that right doing for the bromine substitution type chemistry uh, the kind that we haven't looked at is aniline so we used anilines in the last chapter but we didn't really talk about how to make them so you can actually make them from nitrobenzenes remember benzene can be nitrated fairly effectively uh, because of the really strong nitro Electrophile. So we could take something like this, like a benzoic, a nitrobenzoic acid, three nitro, uh, yeah, three nitrobenzoic acid or meta nitrobenzoic acid, and we can reduce this with hydrogen and a metal catalyst uh, under pressure. So the book actually gives specifics for this particular molecule, but the important part is just hydrogen with a metal catalyst. Remember that that catalyst won't mess with the benzene too much. Um, it also won't reduce carboxylic acids. And so we can selectively reduce the nitro group to an amine. And the book uh, gives a couple other reagents that can be used for basically the same thing. This uh, hydro hydrogenation is is useful, but it is kind of a pain. I don't know if you remember from back in chapter five. Tries with hydrogen. You've got these fairly expensive metal catalysts that you have to deal with. So um, there are some other conditions as well that that they talk about that can be just like done in solution with metals. So um, you can take a look at those if you want. Again the way that we're doing the class now you don't have to memorize all these reactions you just have to be able to go look them up when you want a particular transformation so if we want to make an aniline then we need to find reagents to do that so let's do that
See if you can come up with some steps. To synthesize. this to, to do the synthesis. So if you think of some reagents, um, if you can list them in the chat, like one, two, three in sequence, or uh, just some ideas of a general plan, like this, then this, something like that, so I can, so I can see what you're thinking, and then we'll look, look at it together. That's okay. Is that just saying you have no idea what to do first? In this case, good question, Nicole. In this case, um, we have to think about that because the order in which we put these things on is going to influence the, the regiochemistry, the, the geometry. So in this case, um, we probably would want an electron withdrawing group because we need the substituents to end up being meta. And if we, if we put an electron donating group on first, then um, that wouldn't happen. Then we'd have ortho selectivity. So here you see this is an electron withdrawing group. This is an electron donating group. So if we made this first, then we couldn't put this on with the selectivity. We'd have a different selectivity. So that's not, not going to work. So we have to go the opposite order. That kind of gives us the clue that we need to put this on first and then this.
All right, so we got and then that reduction. Yeah, right. So first we have to add this and then and then deal with this. So let's think about what like let's think about the things that are happening from the product and then figure out the order that we want to put them in. Um, so definitely since we're starting with benzene, it makes it clear that we're going to add this and this. Those are the, the things that are going to happen on there. So then we can go either think about or look up how we would add those things. So for this part, we know that we can make amines from nitrobenzenes. So that's kind of our general plan for that part, because um, we know that we can nitrate using nitrous, uh, nitric acid, sulfuric acid, and then reduce with hydrogen and nickel like we just talked about. So that's how we can make that. For this part, um, this would be a ketone. So we do that through acylation. We can take benzene. And we can isolate it using um, an acyl chloride and the aluminum catalyst. So that's how we do that. That's how we do this. Now we have to think about the order so that we get the right selectivity. So we want to put the electron withdrawing group on first. Then the electron, or then we can put on the the nitro and and reduce it. So um, overall, this is going to look like first the acyl chloride, the acylation, then the nitration, followed by, uh, finally, the reduction. So something like that. I know this is kind of jumping all over the place, but is it similar to question three on the quiz? Like, could I have done the same thing and used that so um chlorine thing let me uh pull that up here i don't remember probably um where are we This, this is what you're talking about? Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, same idea. So you have to you have to think about the the directing in this case. Um, not to tell you the answer here, but you have to think about like what's happening after each step and are those reagents directing to the positions you want them to direct to or not? So ortho para versus meta directing. Um, so yeah, that's a similar idea that when we, if we want a specific di substituted benzene with a specific um, regio selectivity, a specific isomer, then we need to make sure to put things on in the right order to do that. Okay. And uh, Irina says, I saw a video where someone added H plus instead of ALCL3 as a catalyst here with the ACL chloride. Um, can you, do you have a link to that? Can you send me that? That, that sounds wrong, but I wonder if something else is going on there. Um, ACL chlorides are, are very, very reactive and you really kind of have to keep them away from water because they'll just react with water and form, uh, carboxylic acids. So, um, it's, un seems strange to me that that would be done in acid, uh, but there's a different way of doing that, that that would work. All right. 
And Nicole says, what is step number two doing? I get what one and three are, but what's the purpose of number two? Number two is how we put the nitro group, the NO2 on there. So in order to make the amine, we first need to nitrate, and then we can reduce it uh, with, that makes sense? Yeah. So that's how, that's how we put the nitro group on, so then we can reduce the nitro group to the amine. Any other questions about that one? So that's that's pretty much chapter ten. Um, that's all there is to it. The um, let's take a look at some at a couple problems before we wrap up for today. So there is an. A mild anesthetic called benzocaine, you may be familiar with it, um, that it is a, a topical anesthetic, like, you know, you can put it on and it kind of numbs stuff up, um, like for toothaches and whatever, stuff like that. Uh, so benzocaine uh, is an amine, and it is actually synthesized from amino benzoic acid. We will learn uh, in the next chapter how to do this part, but basically in a couple steps, you can go from 4-aminobenzoic acid to benzocaine, uh, which is ethyl-4-aminobenzoate. So we'll deal with this later, but for now, see if you can come up with this plan. Starting from toluene. To make four aminobenzoic acid. Uh, you got to do this this transformation. The toluene to here. What are the steps? This is going to be a multi-step synthesis. So see if you can come up with some of those steps.
Anybody? It's a tough one. It's got some steps to it, and we have to think about it. Uh, I realize it's 1030. I know we've been ending about 1030. Um, if you need to, if you if you're counting on that, go ahead. I'll, of course, record this. Otherwise, we'll, we'll keep going and work on this. Yeah, I don't know how to move the CH3. Do we need to move the CH3? I didn't I didn't do this on purpose, but um, you know, if we think about the toluene at position one, the methyl group that makes a toluene, then we could just renumber this like this, right? So we don't have to move the, the methyl group. So Irina's right, at some point we have to oxidize that methyl group, but we have to be a little careful because methyl group is uh, electron donating and therefore ortho para directing. A carboxylic acid is electron withdrawing and therefore meta directing. So we have to be careful about when, when we do that. Go ahead and keep, keep going with that. Any uh, anybody want to submit a full synthesis before we go through it? Okay, that's fair. Don't know the last step, okay. All right, let's take it piece by piece again. Um, so the methyl group is going to get oxidized at some point with some chromic acid, right? I think we talked about that already. So you suggested that. So then the other piece of this is to put on the amine. And as we said, Earlier, to put on the amine is going to be first a uh, nitration. And then a reduction. Yes, three steps, right. Um, 
So we've got to put on the amine and we've got to oxidize those two things. But the potentially tricky part here is we have to be careful about the order that we're doing things in because of directing groups. So right now we have an ortho para director. We don't want to oxidize that into a meta director. We want to put this on first. Um, so let's get some room here. Let's just draw this step by step. So we'll put on our nitro group. And remember that when we use an ortho para director, we generally are going to favor the para product because of steric concerns, because these are going to be hindered. We will or also make some ortho product, which is why it's called an ortho para director. But we can assume that we can separate that out later through some chromatography or something like that. So we separate that out. We've got this. All right. So now um, this part is, is also a little bit tricky and, and not something I would have expected you to know. But we actually don't want to reduce to the amine yet. And the reason is that chromic acid is such a strong oxidant that we could essentially re-oxidize the amine back to the nitro group, which we don't want to do. Because if amine can be reduced here, it can also be oxidized. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't expect you to know that. Um, but uh, what we want to do then is first do our oxidation to make the carboxylic acid. And then our final step will be that reduction because we know that that reduction does not reduce carboxylic acids. So this way we can reduce to form that final product. And then um, again, this, this happens a lot with these types of problems. Don't get too confused by stuff rotating because benzenes are flat, they can rotate, they can flip around, whatever. Um, we, that's why we're interested in the relationship between the substituents, one, four, or para. That's what's important there. Um, so a uh, question, so electron withdrawing groups goes before electron donating groups. What do you mean? goes before. In this case, well, the only thing you have to worry about with electron donating versus electron withdrawing is the directing ability on the benzene. So in this case, we have an electron donating group. There's no electrons there, but methyl group, methyl is considered electron donating. So that means that we're going to have ortho para selectivity when we add our nitro group here. Um, so that's why we want to do that first. We don't want to oxidize it first because then we would have meta directing instead. A, a carboxylic acid is meta directing, a methyl group is ortho para directing. So if we want the para product, we have to put do that electrophilic aromatic substitution first before we make the carboxylic acid. So this is already on there. And that's what's going to be ortho para directing. So this directs the nitro nucleophile to the para position. If this were electron withdrawing, the nitro group would go here to the meta position, and that's not what we that would not be what we want. Does that help? Uh, 
Yes, that's that's right, Nicole. Yeah, that's what we would be. Doing. This is a homework problem, by the way. This is uh, number thirty-seven in chapter ten. All right. Um, so we'll stop there for now. Other questions? Concerns. Um, stick around if you want. Otherwise, I will uh, see you Wednesday. Uh, look for the exam to come up at some point today or tomorrow, and it'll be due next um, Wednesday. Although, if that becomes a problem, we can extend that as well. So we, uh, this is our last couple weeks of class, so uh, we're, we're really almost done here. Yep. All right. Well, thanks, everybody. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll see you soon. Can I share my, my um, like, part of the quiz of the question that I was asking about, number three?